Hello, 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 and welcome back to episode 185 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. My name is Jeremy Lesniak, and I'm going to be joining you with Sensei Jared Wilson as he gives us his top 10 reasons why we should all be reading martial arts books. If you're new to the show, I want to thank you for joining us and suggest that you check out the show notes for this episode and all of our other episodes at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. If you're up for checking out the products we make, sparring gear, apparel, some other kind of fun, cool stuff, the best place for all that is whistlekick.com. I'd like to put out a call. We've had some great guests on the show. We've got some great guests lined up, but I'm going to be honest. The more guests we have lined up, ready to record, or already recorded, the easier my life is. We can edit a bunch of these together, and it's easier for me to batch them out, and then go a week or two without conducting an interview, without editing interviews, and that way I have time to focus on the other aspects of Whistlekick. So if you know someone that you'd love to see on the show, or rather hear on the show, head on over to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, fill out that guest form, and put us in touch with your instructor or your instructor's instructor or some amazing person that you met at a seminar. It's not about rank. It's not about name recognition. It's about great stories. So I'm calling on all of you. Help us out. Help me out. And let's get some other great guests on the show. Today's episode with Sensei Jared Wilson is his third time on the show. We did an interview episode with him a while back, and he was also the one I asked to join us for the McDojo chat that we had on a while ago. And he's just become a good friend, good friend of the show, and I really appreciate him actually reaching out to me with the idea for this show. This is despite the fact he has his own great martial arts podcast. He wanted to come on Martial Arts Radio and talk about this stuff, so I think that's great. If you're not a book reader, this episode is actually for you. If you are, I think you might come up with some other ideas of why to read books, and to be frank, give you some additional perspectives that you can hold in your mind as you read some of these books. Some of these ideas that Sensei Wilson came up with are honestly stuff I'd never even considered. And I've said on the show a couple of times, I'm not a big book reader, but he's inspired me. That's going to become a little bit more important in my life as I move forward because, well, you'll see. Hey, everybody, I'm back here. And I don't know what episode this is going to be. This is kind of a, a little bit different thing that we're doing today. I'm back with Sensei Jared Wilson. Welcome back to the show. Thank you very much. This is, uh, this is I think we said the third time I'm this on is, here, right? This is the third time you're on the show. It's, you know, heck. I get the pledge pin. That's right. That's right. If if I get sick, um, you know, if I come down <laughs> with Ebola, uh, you will probably get the nod to take over the show because... <laughs> You've been on here, and, and, and what we're going to talk about today actually was your idea. So um, this is funny. I feel like I'm I'm on your show, but on my show, right? <laughs> kind, of, kind of interesting. And, it's a joint show. Uh, sure. Hey, we'll, we'll call it a collaboration where you, you do go. most of the work. Uh, <laughs> and I'm quite all right with that. If anybody else out there wants to propose a show idea where you do all of the work and I just kind of <laughs> hang out, I'm fine with that. For those of you that may not know Sensei Wilson, he's been on a couple times. We had him on, and I don't remember what episode number it is. We'll link it in the show notes. He came on, did an interview, and I was on his show because, yeah, Sensei Wilson is the host of the Martial Thoughts podcast. And then we brought him back when we had the roundtable discussion for McDojo's with, oh, man, I'm embarrassed. I've forgotten that gentleman's name, but the social media is McDojo Life. And maybe that's not bad that I remember him by the brand and not by the name, (laughs) but he was a nice guy. And we had a lot of fun on that conversation too. So here we are instance number three of us chatting. So that's pretty cool. And this started, you had written to me and, and said that you had some ideas for doing an episode on books, right? I mean, that's what we're here to talk about is, is books. So why don't you tell the listeners what, what's going on today? Yeah. The way it, um, the way it actually started was when I was interviewing you on my podcast. Um, I asked the the same question. It's like, well, what martial arts books do you read to, to all my uh, guests? And you had the response where you said, well, I really don't read that many. You know, it wasn't. And that kind of that kind of blew my mind and that 
some people out there aren't reading martial arts books because in my little you know realm of martial arts, that's a big chunk of what I do. Uh, I, I love reading martial arts books. So the fact that someone you know wasn't as in depth in their reading as I was kind of shocked me out of my reality. So I'm I and that was almost a year ago, I think something like that. Yeah. So I in my own head, I was like, okay, well. Why do people read martial arts books? Why don't they read martial arts books? And, and, and there's, if there's one thing every martial artist can agree on, it's that you cannot learn martial arts from a book. But I've written three books on martial arts, so here, read them. So, <laughs> I, you know, I, it, it, there's a weird dichotomy there that's, you know, martial arts books are good, but at the same time, they're pretty useless. So, I, you know, when I emailed you, I kind of put together a list of, uh, based on your shows, your Thursday shows of, you know, top 10 reasons to read martial arts books. So I, I just kind of put them together and said, this is the reasons I think martial arts books are good. All right, cool. So we've, we've got this top 10 here. And from what I understand, you've got some examples for at least some of these. And we're going to drop all of these li links. Not all of them will be links, but at least these titles of books and, and the outline into the show notes. We'll still kick martial arts radio.com. And, you know, of course, we'll link to Sensei Wilson's show. If you haven't checked it out, definitely check it out. Uh, we do some similar things, but they're different enough that, you know, you should you should check it out. It's it's not the same thing. And, and let's be honest, more martial arts is always better, isn't it? <laughs> that works for me. That's right. And we're uh, uh, I, I won't. I'll just put out a teaser because I get a lot of feedback that this drives people crazy and that that's fun to me that we have some things in the works in the background about doing some uh, more collaborative stuff where we may bring in some other people because there is never enough martial arts. So I'll just let that hang out there and you guys can all speculate and wonder what is he talking about? Um, and, and then I'll get some hate mail about it. Be you need the, like the cliffhanger know. music, the dun, dun, yeah. dun, 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 dun. <laughs> maybe maybe we'll throw that in in post, but probably not because we both just did it, and I'm sure it's way better than any sample we could get. <laughs> Let's work through it, you know, David Letterman style, starting with number ten. Here are the reasons that that people should read and, and consider reading martial arts books. Reading the views and ideas of others in your art, you can get some some additional some supplemental information. And that allows you to have new and interesting concepts explained to you, or they can be useful to explain something to somebody else that perhaps they don't learn as well in a in a class setting. You know, t tell us tell us what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, that one is. Um, it's the same reason that you have different instructors in the dojo, in that sometimes hearing the same thing either from a different person or in a different way, it just makes that click for you. So even though you've been, you know, your sensei has been saying the same thing to you for two years, you know, move your foot to the left when you kick, move your foot to the left when you kick. If you see a picture of it in a book by Bruce Lee, all of a sudden you're going, hey, that I should move my foot to the left when I kick. Sensei doesn't care how you learned it as long as you can finally get that and you move your foot to the left. So uh, sometimes just hearing the same thing in a different way or – or hearing something different brings up questions, right? Mm. So, you know, that can even that can even lead to more, you know, research, reading more books. You know, well, why does you know why does Osensei say that I should do it like this when my instructor says I should do it like this? You know, why is uh, uh, Funakoshi doing the kata this way and we do it this way? Or is one more right or wrong than the other? You know, it can bring up questions that way. Mm. So, right. that was my intention with that one. Great. And then number nine, martial arts books can provide evidence of the established ideas in martial arts, in your art and somebody else's art. They can serve as kind of a, a historical record, I guess is what you mean there? Yeah, like um, like I was kind of saying like with research points, you know, it's saying, well, this this is the real intention of what we're doing here. So sometimes it can explain the why if you don't know it. Uh because a lot of times the how is pretty easy, but the why is is a whole separate animal to try and tame. So that might be, you know, it's like I said, uh, Funakoshi's uh, 
uh, Karate Do, My Way of Life, as an example, you know, where he goes through and kind of explains what his idea of karate should be. And I'm not a karateka, but I read that book and I fell in love with it, uh, <laughs> mainly because it it changed my idea of what karate was supposed to be. I had a preconceived notion of what karate was. And in my head, maybe it's because I was thinking of the Japanese karate, where it was very militaristic, very everyone's in a line, everyone's doing the exact same kick. And if you read the book, he's like, yeah, karate changes. It'll change after I'm gone. I've changed it to make it what I am. So, And it just was very different than what I was thinking it should have been. And that's a great book, and it's one that gets recommended on the show all the time, mm-hmm. at least at least on our, on our show. I'm guessing it comes up in conversation on yours as well. Oh, yeah. I've, I've certainly heard it mentioned on your show. Number eight, books can fill in the philosophy, the history, and the art portion of martial arts. Yeah, the um, I, we call it martial arts for a reason. There's more than – just learning how to beat people up. Uh, Wait, that what? Would be his... <laughs> what? There is? <laughs> I'm not saying it's not the good part, but yeah, I mean, martial arts, I mean, if if it was just about learning how to beat people up, then it would actually be way too simplistic to hold people's interest. So there has to be a philosophy, a history behind it. Um, Don Drager is uh, a martial arts author, a kind of he, he was kind of the first one to te- te- or sorry to take martial arts more as a, a historical and artistic aspect. He promoted the idea of hoplology, which is using martial arts as an art form for cultural studies. You know, there's no reason to say that martial arts isn't as valuable to a culture as dances or pottery or some of the other things that historians and um, ar- archaeologists look at. So you can actually look at it that way. And being that I do mainly Japanese arts, something like any, – well, any of them by Dave Lowry. But the one I was looking at on my bookshelf was called In the Dojo by Dave Lowry, where it's a book on martial arts, but it doesn't mention a single technique in it. It's all about kind of the attitude of respect and proper adherence to tradition – that he kind of uh, espouses in that one. And that one's uh, a favorite of mine. I go back and read that one occasionally. Right on. Books, martial arts books, allow you to sit at the feet of the masters. What do you mean by that? Well, I will never train with O-sensei. In fact, actually, think of, uh, you know, think of your question, right? The one you have on your show is, you know, who could you train with in the past? Yeah. Well... If they wrote a book, that is a way to kind of train with them. You can sit at their feet and listen to the lectures that they have to give. Um, uh, You know, (laughs) for all of us, unfortunately, Bruce Lee was taken away way too young. But we have collections of what his philosophy on martial arts was. We have all these really awesome stick drawings that he does about how to throw a punch that, you know, I don't want to use the word stole, but he stole from other things. So... Liberated. A, he liberated those. The there concepts. you go. <laughs> it's never stealing. It's just borrowing a technique. You'll give it back later. That's right. In the face with force. <laughs> right. Um, you know, to use that one as an example. So like, uh, you know, Tao of Jeet Kune Do is a great example for a way that you can actually learn from Bruce Lee without having ever met him or his students or anyone who's ever trained with him. Or even in studying Jeet Kune Do, you can still learn from the way he wants to or the way he thinks martial arts should be. And I think that this is one that a lot of people don't think about, you know, and it's, it's a great point that we've had a lot of wonderful martial artists alive in the last 50 to a hundred years. And most of them did some sort of writing. Mm -hmm. And now in the age of the internet, you don't have to look that hard to find the book or a digital version of the book, or at the very least someone that's done a book review on it. So you can gain some of those concepts. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but you do a number of writings on other people's work, you know, so-called book reports. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Maybe I shouldn't have chosen that term. It sounds, sounds a little 
a little bit insulting. That's not how I mean it because I know how much <laughs> effort I put into book reports. But you know, I've read some of your posts on the books that you read, and you know, there, there's a lot of thought there. But for someone that maybe isn't going to read everything, you know, the whole book, they can read you know something like someone from you and digest that and decide yeah. whether or not they want to put in the effort to read the whole thing. Yeah, that when I write the the reviews or the book reports <laughs> and I stand it's up in front of class. It's going to come back to haunt me, I can tell. <laughs> um, when I write them, my goal is to kind of say, here's the good and the bad about this book. It's up to you to decide whether you want to put forth the effort and the money to actually go out and get it yourself. Um, and uh, honestly, I've, I've gotten to the point where I've got a couple of publishers sending me, you know, the, the new copies of the books as they come out and it there's a lot of really good martial arts books that are coming out um and like if you compare it back to you know yeah probably all the way up to the mid 90s there was there was very few books that were really that good you know ones that were like hey can you know pass it on to a friend type of thing so i the quality of martial arts books has increased with um i don't know if it's as we have had more people do martial arts or access to computers or what it is, but the, the quality of the books has increased in that aspect. I think that there are authors out there recognizing that, you know what, teaching martial arts through a book is not the best use of that medium. I think it's the illustration of the concepts right. that are, are inherent to martial arts. That's what I find. And, and, you know, the books that you've mentioned today and, and just, you know, looking down this list that we're, we're going down, that's where the best books are. It's, illustrating the more metaphysical points to the non-combat aspects and not that you can't learn brilliant combat aspects. I mean, there are plenty of books out there that talk about fear and, and things like that, but you know, and, and, and to be honest, when I do my reviews, I, I usually just say that they have the techniques. I really, if it's a system that I don't study, the techniques aren't the most interesting part to me. Right. It's like you said, it's the, the history of the art, the philosophy, the the general concepts of how their art works. That's what I'm really interested in. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Num uh, num that was number seven. Number six. They can inspire you to practice or train. That seems pretty obvious, but tell us more. <laughs> do yeah, do you time. read books and then, you know, get part way through and get all hyped up and put the book down and go train? Well, I, I, I literally just yesterday finished my uh, my conversion of my half my garage into a, a personal dojo. So, yeah, that actually does happen. Um, yeah, I just got the mats and put them down yesterday. So, yeah, I, uh, it depends on the art that, it, you know, that I'm reading about. But this is where those techniques actually can do the inspiration. Uh, for whatever reason, I've been reading a lot on the Filipino martial arts recently. So I actually bought a pair of Kali sticks online and – I actually go and try and figure out what it is they're they're trying to show with the pictures. So, yeah, I actually go into my garage and practice. Nice. Number five, books are old-fashioned, which is at least somewhat of a draw for martial artists, <laughs> and it provides a link to the past. Because, yeah, we, we do like things that are old, and uh, sometimes, darn it, we're going to do it the exact same way that our instructor's instructor's instructor has set down – because they knew everything back then. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I, I might have injected a little bit of my personal philosophy in the way I asked that, but uh, go ahead. No, that, that's that's pretty much it. Um, I, the fact that we're learning how to fight with swords, right, or staffs, that is essentially never going to be the best way to learn how to fight someone in our modern society. So if you're into martial arts, you're at least – thinking of some things anachronistically, you know, you're thinking of it's some connection to the past, you know, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I, you know, Kenjutsu, Japanese swordsmanship is essentially useless today, but the idea of this is how things were, um, it, it, it keeps the, the light out me in check. You know, it's like, <laughs> I don't fear technology. Obviously I have a podcast, but there's some things I think that should be done the old fashioned way. You know, I, I keep a journal, uh, you know, a martial arts journal where I actually write down things, you know, it's not a video recording or anything like that. So there's some things I think that should be done the, the old fashioned way. And I think martial arts is one of those. 
there there's no there's no app that's going to help you with that sidekick so to speak that's a good point. okay number four you can't train all the time like in an airport now come on i i could come up with <laughs> <laughs> okay so i'm not 100 percent sure when this is coming out folks but um the whole United Airlines getting dragged off the plane <laughs> thing happened go. this week. And if you're on Facebook, if you're on social media at all, you have been, and you're a martial artist and you have martial arts friends, you have probably been flooded with some of the <laughs> best memes of all time. This is, this is like the pinnacle of memes right now. <laughs> um, so it's funny that what, three that weeks was my ago, example. You said, this list with that example, and now I'm thinking I could train in an airport, <laughs> <laughs> or for an airport maybe, or, or for an airport. Right? Um, let's pull it back from the humorous point. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, I'm just we're never going to get through this, and we're just well, gonna, me, the, the show is going to turn into me telling. Did you see the one? Um, so I'll, I'll hand the ball to you and, and let you go with it. If you want to make some fun of it first, by all means. Okay, first of all, um, Master Ken, always quick-witted that he is, has already had his you know, uh, United Airlines defense uh, seminar that he's put online, yes. which is worth a shot if you haven't seen that one. Um, the reason, ironically, I put airport is – this is before September 11th, but I used to – you know, whenever I'd fly anywhere, I'd bring my Boken on the plane. Oh. <laughs> um, and most of the time, I'd just put it in the overhead compartment and nobody would say anything to me. So that's why, ironically, the airport idea came to my head. Uh, <laughs> but airports are uh, – the reason I picked that one is because it's a good place for – you're going to be stuck somewhere. You're going to be sitting there for a while. Yeah, you can kind of get up and move around, but it's probably not the best place you want to be practicing your sidekick. You know, <laughs> yeah, they have those columns in the middle of the airport. It's probably not the best place to you know, pull out your punching bag and start using it there. Uh, Airline security, as we can see, doesn't really like that too well. Right. So that's a good place to do something else martial artsy besides physically practice, and that might be practicing your mind, practicing by looking at something else that somebody else had said with martial arts, reviewing some ideas. And, of course, getting warmed up to, to get on a plane and defend your seat. <laughs> no, I don't care how much money you offer me. I I just booked it, a flight yesterday and uh it's not on United it's on Delta. <laughs> but but who who knows what's going to happen. I, I I have my routine. Uh if if you listen to the show, you you know what I have in my pockets and uh mm -hmm. the things I carry with me that um are completely legal to carry on a plane and yet I still <laughs> find uh quite viable. Number 3. Books can start conversations with strangers or with people in your art. Yeah, there's, um, I, I, the, my example again was in the airport. So those two are kind of related, I guess. Um, I was reading, uh, one of, um, uh, Anthony Cummings books on ninjas, which again, are more scholastic works. He actually went to the old 15th, 16th century ninja scrolls and translated them into English for us. And then he gives comments about, you know, well, this is really what they were trying to say when he said that. But, you know, if you're reading a book on – it says ninjas on the front, that's going to have people looking at you and at least trying to figure out what it is you're reading about. So I've actually started conversations in an airport because I was reading a book on ninjas. Were, were these conversations you wanted to have? For the most part, <laughs> I'm OK. <laughs> as long as it's not the, you know, which one are you, Raphael or Leonardo, you know, that type of thing. <laughs> See, now that's more my style. I would, I, That's the conversation that I would like to have. Oh. That's a great episode idea. What Ninja Turtle are you? All right, I'm going to jot that down. <laughs> um, well, you know, it, I look at conversations like that, even if it's – and I'm not trying to be insulting because nobody – not everybody does what we do. But even if you're the most martial arts ignorant person in the world, you can use that as an opportunity to at least explain to somebody what it is you're doing and why it isn't like the movies and like TV and like Ninja Turtles. But I've, I've even started conversations in, in my dojo because I was reading a book. Um, mine was on Aikido in an Aikido school. Funny how that works. And 
they were asking me and they were saying, well, what does this one say? So I, I had a reputation. They always would come to me and ask which books they should read uh, by the time I was leaving there. So uh, that was a good way to start conversations about what Aikido was and what different people thought of it. So It's a good thing to be known for, for reading a lot yeah. of books. Better than being known for, you know, which, Not reading which cookies should I eat? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> which which um, no one asks me that, but... <laughs> Maybe maybe they will now. Maybe I just painted myself into a corner. <laughs> Books can be a record of a style. Words and pictures. Reference material, essentially. Yeah, that kind of goes along with um, a couple of the other ones. But it, it seems to be the, you know, we were talking about the, the books from the, the 70s, 80s, early 90s, how they were just like lists of techniques and, you know, examples of the way they do their technique. That can be a valuable resource for your particular style. If you don't remember how exactly to uh, get into, I don't know, a chokehold that they're doing, something like that, that uh, almost every school will have, at least some style will have a book of reference for, this is the way that we do things. And the really good books will actually say, well, this is the way we do it, and it's different from these, neither one is good or bad, but Here's why it's different. And I've got a couple of uh, Xing Yi books that are actually like that. They're saying, this is the way we do Xing Yi, and it's different, but this is why it's different. That makes sense. Right on. And I think, too, you know, if I was going to start a martial art style, which, mm -hmm. uh, don't worry, that that is nowhere on the roadmap. They're... they're <laughs> It's probably, no, it's probably, <laughs> when I think of all the things that are somewhere on the roadmap of things that I'm trying to do with Whistlekick, developing my own style of martial arts is probably the only one I can think of that's not on there. <laughs> uh, you know, TV stuff, movie stuff, competition stuff, more equipment, more apparel. I, I don't want er anyone to ever say they have a black belt in Whistlekick. <laughs> but maybe I'll say that. Maybe maybe I'll, maybe if you listen to all the episodes, maybe maybe, there, maybe there's something there. All right, so maybe I just walk that back a bit, but no, uh, I'm joking. All right, and the number one, and I know that in what you sent me, it was in no particular order, but I think this this number one is really appropriate to save for last. Martial arts books can allow you into the world of other martial arts. Yeah, I. I think that one's the most important, honestly. Like you said, it wasn't in a particular order, but I, I you're only going to be able to train probably in one, two, maybe three martial arts, really, to get to enough depth to where you feel you know it. Yeah. But I can get the general ideas of what these other martial artists think and why they think that. You know, why does why does Filipino martial arts use two sticks or a stick and a dagger? Well, it has to do with their history of you know, what their original martial arts were, and then they had the Spanish come in and show them new stuff. So it, it lets you kind of peek behind the curtain. You know, martial arts for, well, for maybe for historically obvious reasons, were not the best at sharing their information about what they do. And it makes sense because if, you know, you're going to have to go kill that guy the next day, you probably didn't want him knowing that you really like kicking with your left foot. So... But we're way past that because, and well, we just don't do that anymore. So being able to look at what other martial arts do and why they do it, uh, for one, I've actually used and found some ideas I used in Aikido from other, uh, other systems. So that's a, a really valuable thing, and it doesn't have to be just learning for learning's sake. It could be learning something for your specific martial art. All right. I think that's a pretty compelling list. And I think after this, I'm feeling almost a little defensive because part of the <laughs> inspiration here was my reluctance to read. And it's not that I don't read. It's that I don't read much. And the num you know, just as Sensei Wilson, you've said that publishers will send you books. I get some of them, too. I don't think nearly as many as you do because you are known as kind of being the martial arts book guy. Yeah. But I've got <laughs> – there, 
<laughs> well, you could be known as the guy to ask about cookies. There you go. <laughs> I read. It's just not often. You know, for for me, reading is something I enjoy, but it's not the relaxing kind of wind down, deta- brain detached thing that it is for some people. For me, that's martial arts movies or TV. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, I, I'm more likely to, you know, watch Iron Fist and go to bed than I am to read a book and go to bed. I, I do, you know, the books that are, are sent, I, I do read at least some of them. You know, I do try to get a sense as to what the author is trying to say. Because I think it's important. And, you know, um, if somebody's going to send a book, I'm going to do my best to at least respect that and, and read some of it. You know, there's a there's a book I'm working on right now that was sent as a gift from a guest and that episode is done it has mm. not, not aired uh, but by the time let's see when is this coming out by the time this comes out you will have it will have already come out so uh i i can say it uh it was grandmaster june Rhee. Mm. And, wow yeah yeah that was a lot of fun but uh you know we were like 10 minutes in and he said have you read my book and I said, no, no, sir, but I've heard of it. And he said, I'm going to send you my book. And he did. And so I have a lovely autographed copy of, of his book. And it's really intriguing, uh, very interesting stuff in a, a very different sort of martial arts book. So uh, I should probably link that because that's what we do, right? Show notes, link books. So I'm jotting that down. Cool. All right. Uh, what? Martial arts book or books, you know, are you reading right now? Like, just give us a couple that pop to mind that maybe you haven't talked about before on your show or uh, on mine. Well, uh, believe it or not, the one I just finished was um, uh, the second book on Krav Maga by uh, something we both had on the show uh, a couple of years apart. But uh, Gershon uh, Cap, I can't remember his name now. Ben Karen. Ben Karen. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, they just they just sent me the his second book, and I I think it comes out. Well, by the time this show goes up, it'll be out. So um, I'm reading that right now. I'm reading one on um, iron palm techniques from kung fu, and again, one of the ones I kind of it, it's pretty beat up now. It's so dog-eared, but like um, living the martial way. I read go and read through that one occasionally. Mm. That that's a book that's come up quite a few times. Yeah, for sure. All right, cool. Well, um, this is the part in an interview show where I would ask if you had any parting words of wisdom. We've heard your wisdom. You've been on the show. You've been through that rigmarole. Do you have any parting book wisdom? <laughs> read more. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> read more. Don't don't um, don't read underwater. I don't know. <laughs> I. Give a book a chance, you know, if you're one of the people that doesn't like reading or, you know, that wasn't your your gig in high school, you know, whatever it happens to be, give it a chance. There's something in the book that will be useful to you. How's that? That's good advice. All right. Well, Sensei Wilson, thanks for coming on. Thanks for giving even more of your time. I mean, man, you're, you're, the, you're the most common guest. Common? You're, you're the most frequent. There we go. Guest on there, this oh. show. And yet you have your own show. So that says a lot about your passion for sharing your knowledge and interacting with the world in this crazy podcasting way. And uh, th- thanks for your support. And thanks for coming on and talking to me today. Hey, no problem. All right, listeners, don't forget whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We'll have the show notes, the books that we've talked about today, and, and uh, we'll throw up this outline. If you're trying to make a compelling argument to someone of why they should read books, you know, here you go. You, you've got some, some lists. So thanks a lot, and, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.